How are two people already in here? That doesn't even make sense. <laughs> that's way too humanly fast. Or way, that's inhumanly fast. Yeah. Shaker, what's up, man? Can you hear me? Good lord, that was fast. <laughs> I'm doing a random, um, a very random live stream because I had an opportunity and I thought, you know what, I'm not going to get a chance this weekend at all, so why not do it right now? And apparently a lot of you are uh, not not busy tonight, so that's good. I was kind of thinking like, you know, I, I don't know if anybody's actually going to be on, uh, but this is going to work out just fine, so... What is everybody up to? Hey, what's up, Jeff? You did, Neves. What's up, man? Neves Knives. If you guys have not subscribed to Neves Knives, you need to. They've got an awesome channel, and they deserve way more subscribers than they currently have. Absolutely. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Um, so I don't have a lot of stuff on the table tonight, mainly because I was like, man, do I want to drag everything down here? And now I'm just going to bring, I'm just going to kind of line up my, you know, the things that I have right now that, uh, I have the most, uh, you know, that my attention is on the most, you know, the stuff that gets carried every day, the stuff get, that gets picked up and messed with, um, you know, yeah, exactly. Uh, you're gonna, gonna be visiting the family this weekend. So don't worry. Everything is, Hey, there's slicey dicey. What's up, man? Everything for this weekend is pre-recorded, um, except for the drawing video, which I'll have to kind of do on the fly on Saturday. I am very, very excited to uh, give away that Slim Mitty Medford Marauder, so that video is still going to happen. But we've got wait, 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 wait. finally, oh, somebody's <laughs> saying how tall they were. Um, anyways, uh, um, um, that video will have to be done kind of on the fly on Saturday. I'm excited to give that knife away. Everything else that I've got planned for the weekend has been pre-recorded and is ready to go. So, um, anyways, I just thought, you know, tonight might be, might be a good night to get a live stream in because I don't always get opportunities to do that. There's no way to like schedule them and make them a regularly occurring thing with my, with, you know, the way that my, you know, schedule is. So why not just do it when I can? Hey, there's Big Red EDC. Holy cow, there's a whole bunch of uh, um, YouTubers in here. That's awesome. Oh, boy. I'm excited to win that knife. Thanks in advance, says Kyle Roberts. <laughs> and Ryan R is already uh, preemptively congratulating him. <laughs> oh, man. Hey, guys, it's uh, it's Arrowheads um, in the chat who um, donated that knife. If you guys are wondering... Um, uh, Arrowheads is the uh, gentleman. That's that's Jeff Goodnow, or or at Goodnow Jeff on Instagram. Um, speaking of people who need more followers slash subscribers, uh, Mr. Goodnow definitely needs more um, followers on Instagram. He also needs some more pictures on his Instagram. <laughs> uh, but I suppose maybe you let me take all of your pictures of your knives for you, right? You don't need to do it yourself. Oh man, let's see here. Everybody's chatting it up. That's cool. That's cool. Um, hey, there's Brewhound. What's up, Brewhound? Uh, guys, I have um, probably about 45 minutes uh, to be on here live. So we can talk about whatever you want. I don't care. It can be knife stuff. It can be not knife stuff. It doesn't really matter. Um, the whole reason why well, now I need is Steve yelling balls. We do need Steve yelling balls. Where is he at? Jeez. It's, I mean, like, that's. Almost a, uh, a must. Oh, good. I'm getting somebody calling me in the middle of the live stream. Never, never mind. That's 44 minutes more than you need. <laughs> How's the bag knife? Um, I love this thing. This was a, uh, you know, a contender for what I call Excalibur or my ideal folding knife. Um, and while it's not, not quite that, um, it is certainly amazing. Golly, my friends are texting me. Um, it's not it's not what I would call Excalibur, but that may that may not be an obtainable title. That might just be me setting this subconscious bar in my mind that I can't reach that allows me to justify constantly buying more things, you know? Um, but uh, yeah, I love it. Absolutely. Um, hang on a sec. Let me go backwards here. Airplane mode. I think airplane mode would shut my wife. <laughs> I would lose connection. So um, let's see here. 
Ba, ba, ba. Kyle Roberts, have you ever handled a key bar? I just ordered one on a whim last night because it was limited edition to only nine. You know what? So weird. I was just looking at key bars just the other day. And I was like, maybe I need that. Do I need that? You know, the same thing that I always do with like anything that catches my eye after a few beverages on a Saturday night. Do I need that? Do I need that? Maybe I do. I don't know. And I hadn't really decided yet. Maybe I have to give that some more thought. Um, have you ever had your ringer off though it just wouldn't be our <laughs> yeah that's true i never turn it off so my job requires me to um like constantly be aware of my phone like i mean i do 95 percent of my job off my phone through texts and emails and conversations so i it, it's like on and off all day the only time it's on airplane mode is supposed to be when i'm doing a video which i really only get one chance a day to do them um but then i have to remember to keep it on so that that's why it's always the the case uh let's see arrowheads amc my wife is actually watching you now too oh what's up that's so cool she i can't I'm, i mean there's no way she's as into knives as you are there's no way um but i'm honored that she's watching um let's see hey ricky what's up man if each knife was a lift what knife would be the deadlift <laughs> um well okay I almost said Praetorian tie, but the Praetorian tie is squat. So, hmm, what knife would be the deadlift? Um, in my head, it would probably be the Crusader Forge FIFP monolith. That is the, that's the biggest, nastiest knife in my head that kind of like stands right alongside the Praetorian tie, but for whatever reason is just ever so slightly in its shadow, just like the relationship between deadlift and squat. If you guys don't remember Ricky, Ricky has been um, like, he, he's actually been in a bunch of videos with me. Um, he got into knives while we worked together at the dealership and was a big part of this channel for a long time. He no longer lives in the same town as me, but we still communicate and talk about knives and stuff. Um, and, uh, he is a super duper active, uh, Instagram. He is, um, uh, he's a bodybuilder and very, um, very, uh, uh, um, very knowledgeable fitness expert. So if you guys are interested in that type of thing, you should definitely give him a follow on Instagram. Um, slice it icy says airplane mode doesn't kill Wi-Fi anymore. Learned that the, learned that I, oh, okay, nice. That's cool. Unless he's like, <laughs> unless that's a very elaborate way to get me to end my live stream. That would actually be pretty funny, but no, I believe you. Shaker MT, I just saw that my Chavez 2019 group knife is on the way. Yes, that's awesome. But you should, I mean, obviously you need to enjoy that one first before if you generously decide to send that to me for review. Um, but uh, yeah, I, that, that's really cool, man. I'm excited for that. You need it. Gear is always a need. Yes, absolutely. Scott Simmons, so cool to see the YouTube Knife Channel dudes on these live streams. It is. It's really fun. I try to pop in on other um, YouTubers' live streams j just because, like, I'm always doing something. And it's as much as it seems like I'm on my phone, I always miss people's live streams. So whenever I have a chance, even if I don't have a, a really established relationship with some of these other guys' channels, I always try to pop in. Because I do care about these channels. I do. I watch their videos and I listen. I mean, I don't catch everybody's video, but I do. But it, I feel like my they're not being a presence with me on some of their live streams makes me seem like a ghost. And I'm, you know, that's not the case. So I'm always, I always try to make it in there. But I'm, I'm flattered that other, um, that other uh, knife channels are in here um, watching me. Big Red EDC favorite knife steel. Okay, favorite knife steel on that I have actually owned on a Safe Queen is M390 because of the pedestal that it is up on that I cannot avoid psychologically. However, for a user steel, based on what I understand about the composition and the optimal hardness and my minimal experience using it versus other common super steels, honestly, it's CPM 154. I did a video on that. Um, I like I like steels. Um, and and designs and just knives in general that are really really well rounded. I kind of like tools that are good of a, good at a lot of things, but not necessarily made for one specific thing. So CPM one fifty four um, is uh, um, probably my favorite steel with that thought process. She she said no and hell no. <laughs> oh man. Well, okay, that's fine. That's fine. Uh, Brewhound misses Ricky. That is so sweet. Passenger seat Ricky Neves Knives, a veteran to the channel, obviously has been around for a while or snuck back and watched one of our old videos. <laughs> um, let's see here. 
Uh, am I catching up? On, uh, is that a new PM2? No, it's not a PM2. It is um, the same black PM2 that you guys always see or that you used to see as a um, size comparison knife on this channel. Ouch. Are you serious? It just bit me. <laughs> um, I just changed the scales on it to some aftermarket um, uh, jade scales and put a titanium backspacer in there and the MXG deed carry clip. Um, I, I really like it that way. Those scales are slightly contoured and I don't, I don't have this obsessive love with the PM2 like I thought I would, despite it being one of the knife community's, you know, most beloved knives. Um, but spicing it up with some of that custom stuff, I think, um, helped me out, helped me enjoy it in, in a way that, you know, it's like it's my own thing. Uh, and it just made a couple of things better. Uh, what's up, Asnalite 325 JJ, have you used your pry tools lately? I never thought I'd use mine so often. So far, um, the uh, pose pry from is it cook tools around here we pronounce that cook uh cook steel seems to be my favorite i use my pry tool often but i think i'm kind of forcing it intentionally with um you know day-to-day -day stuff i almost intentionally go for it now to be like oh this is a great pry tool task as i'm you know getting a coke from a vending machine or something stupid uh shaker mt it will be going to you for review but yes we'll get to play with it first good that makes me happy because you and jeff both just like you guys order a knife and you send it directly to me. If it were me, I'd be like, I want to, I want to get my hands on it first and kind of play, you know, before I send it off to somebody else. Um, and I mean, not that I don't appreciate it, but I always feel bad that you guys do that. So that's cool. I'm glad. I'll, I'll have to hear your thoughts on that. You'll have to message me after you get to handle it. Uh, Kyle Roberts, MC, I got to stop watching your YouTube videos right before bed. I had a weird dream. You did a face reveal video and you looked like Doc Brown from Back to the Future. <laughs> Oh, man, that's ridiculous. <laughs> I don't look like Doc Brown, but I did actually for a little bit have my face up on Instagram. I think uh, uh, I'm trying to think of who's in here who's seen it. Jeff and um, Slicey Dicey have both seen my face. I do not look like Doc Brown. And so is Ricky. Uh, let's see. Oh, yeah. Hey, Ricky, uh, Jeff, uh, you, you purchased um, Arrowhead's uh, um, Arius. I forgot about that. Saturday Night Live, Saturday Knife Live is the place to be. Well, I'm, I, I would have to agree with you. Um, Big Red ADC, I'm usually working at this time, so I miss a lot of live streams, but made this one. Yeah, how weird. Uh, on a Wednesday night at like 8 o'clock, I, I honestly thought like seven people would be in here, and I thought, oh, well, I'll do it for seven people, but I'll take 35 as well and seven likes. I'm always I'm, I'm happy with the likes. Um, who was it during the first live stream? It was like, you guys should like his live stream. And it went down. Um, that just, that cracked me up. It was so funny. Uh, the 229 is pretty freaking epic. I watched your video on that Slicey Dicey and it just made me, so I used to own a 228 mid-tech um, watching the video on the 229, watching, well, I watched a whole bunch. Um, but uh, that, it just is making me salivate over that knife. That's, to me, that was the most exciting knife of 2019. Uh, let's see here. Jeremy Russell, I've never understood the safe queen thing. I, you don't have to, you don't have to, uh, that's, that's, um, you know, I, I feel like some people have that, that sort of like, you know, Ooh, shiny object. I have to like tuck it away and put it in a safe and not ever let any, you know, some people kind of have that mentality with certain things and some people don't. The interesting thing about the knife community is it, it, it attracts both types of people and neither of us are wrong. So um, I think there's definitely a joy in using your tools and there's definitely a joy in taking something that's obviously meant as a tool and then for no reason other than, you know, just weird human nature protecting it uh, beyond all logic. Um, let's see here. Can you show the knives you talk? Yes, I will do that. Uh, we have the um, Manix 2 that's been on my channel forever um, mm -hmm. and really beat up. Uh, S30V, we've got the Alan Putnam classic, or I'm sorry, custom scales, um, flytanium. Uh, liner. I'm gonna wipe off the camera here because it's almost like we're we're watching this through some foggy. Is it? Yeah, uh, that didn't really help. <laughs> um, the uh, it's got the MXG deep carry clip. We have the um, Doug Ritter RS. Oh my gosh, we're still getting we're still getting text. Sorry about that. MC, do you ever carry a belt multi tool? I always carry my Leatherman Wave. I sold my Leatherman Surge and I am considering purchasing a Leatherman Wave. Um, just to have a lighter multi-tool. I don't know that I will EDC it because it might actually deter me from carrying a pocket knife. And I really, really need to justify carrying a pocket knife. Um, pop this Curtis in there. 
those. I should, Jeff, they're all the way upstairs. I, I was thinking about bringing my whole thing down. I don't want to like, so, so I've got a bunch of videos planned for the weekend and I, I'm just, I'm, I'm excited to show those off. And th those are one of like, that's, that's the Friday video. That's the, gonna be like the really shiny Friday video. And so I'm almost, I didn't bring them down because I didn't want to like kind of take away from uh, what I was gonna do with those. Ricky, the RS is incredible. Knew the action was gonna be uh, was gonna blow me away. Then it did exactly that. Yeah, and I, you know, I knew that that knife was gonna be everything he wanted it to be. Um, I remember the first time he saw a Koenig Arius at Koenig, sorry, and um, he was like, I, I have to have that. And then he got it. <laughs> um, now you can never get rid of that PM2 when a knife bites you, it's yours forever. Wow, I must be way back at, oh my gosh, I'm so far back in the comments. <laughs> hang on, hang on. Um, let's see here. Um, I'm a big fan of Force Minutes. I know yeah, I made it. I a face reveal on Instagram. I did. I did Jake Welch. Hey, Jake Welch. What's up, man? Um, can you open up them knives so we can see them, please? Yes, I can, Mark Grant. Um, there is the uh, Steelcraft Bodega. Oh, left-handed reverse flick. Did you guys see that? We've got the Spyderco Shaman. We've got the Hogarter RSK MK1 G2. Spyderco Manix 2. We have my brand new non-flipper. Um, XM18, 3.5 inch, Gen 6, 20 CV, spear point blade. That is a lot of words. Uh, and the PM2. Slicey Dicey says, I'm a handsome devil. Thank you, Slicey. So are you. We are two, we're just a couple of handsome devils. Uh, I did show my face on a sharpening video. Yeah, you put your face... Uh, you lost subscribers when you showed your mug, bro. <laughs> yeah, yeah, probably. You showed your face on a sharp... Yeah, you should do regular live streams on the weekends. I just Yeah, I should I should do regular live streams on the weekends, but I can't... My schedule is so crazy. It, just, it doesn't allow me to. I barely have time to get the videos out that I, that I want to get out each week. Um, I wish I could. If something changes in my lifestyle, then I, I would be more than happy to. Um, let's see here. Even forgiven Chavez for the skull clip. Yeah. So the first time I saw a Chavez knife, I was like, man, that, that design is, is killer. Like it's straightforward and killer and aggressive, but like functional, but he slaps this mighty ducks looking skull pocket clip on the back. What the heck is going on with that? And then I got it and I was like, you know what? I kind of like it. You know, maybe I, maybe I forced myself to like it. I don't know. Um, let's see here. Kiefer, what's going on, man? Tripod legs aren't the ones we've been demanding to see, kid. Oh, yeah, you can you can see the tripod legs. <laughs> hey, I am a professional knife channel, okay? So I don't make mistakes like that. I don't make rookie mistakes. <laughs> um, let's see here. Slice of Dife, what's the drink of choice this evening? I wish I had a drink this evening, but I don't. I'm um, trying to catch up here on the comments, scrolling down, saw the sharpening video, and part of his face still pictured him as Doc Brown. <laughs> That's cute. That cracks me up. Oh, man. Uh, thank you. Mighty Ducks, laughing at that. Good deal. You should try retirement. It's way better than working. You know what, Jeff? That's a good idea. We should all try retirement. <laughs> that sounds uh, way better than, than um, working at some grindy job, right? Uh, let's see here. Uh, do I think the Capara, the Capara, I've never handled the Spyderco Capara. I need to, um, I need to get my hands on one of those. Um, did I skip leg day? Hmm, I don't, ask Ricky. Um, I, I do sometimes at, at most it's, it's only once a week. I know apparently you're supposed to do it like two or, well, Ricky does leg day like four or five times a week. Um, which is apparent if you go to his Instagram, I do legs once a week because I don't like to do legs. Uh, Hey, I caught up on this, on the, um, I caught up on the comments, rusty, uh, news now, NorCal. I purchased my first spider co. I got the shaman and I love it. want to get my Carter scales and a deep carry clip. Any recommendations? Um, you purchased spider, uh, the spider co shaman is your first spider co. Oh my God. The bar has been set for you, buddy. Um, that's awesome. That's, uh, it's, it's my favorite spider co hands down. Um, I don't know about getting my Carter scales. I would, I would like to know myself. Um, so if somebody has any suggestions, that would be really cool. Any chance you are making BSW? I, should I know what BSW is? I don't know what BSW is. Hope if, if you can clarify, I might be able to answer that question. Um, let's see here. I skip leg day and chest day and back day. <laughs> hey man, no judgment. Every now and then I do too. And for uh, in 2000, um, 
let's see if Ricky's still in here, he'll be able to tell you. Uh, from 2014 to like 2000, or well, wait, 2015 to 2017, I think I did too. Um, heck of a first Spider Co. Yep, I agree. Um, Blade Show West, Blade Show West. Oh, Blade Show West. Um, I don't, I don't know if I. It's a long shot. Um, it, like I said, my schedule is crazy, and um, I don't have an enormous amount of free time. Um, any time that I do is is spent with family. Um, but uh, I, my aim is to be able to do that. Um, it's, it's really more than anything. It's just time that holds me back from that. Um, I am, um, you know, I mean, it, it's definitely something that I can pay for. Um, I don't have a problem traveling or anything like, like that. It's, it's honestly just time. It's a miracle that I get some of these videos out, honestly. Um, or am I carrying the non-flipper at all? Mine's breaking in nicely. So I'm not. So here's the thing. I have a video coming out on this um, that is very like, it's very rambly and it's very me saying a lot of like, Ugh, you know, like getting really intense about things and like looking looking way too into things as, as a lot of us knife nets do. And I don't want to ruin anything. No, I'm not carrying it, ironically, because it is a safe queen. Um, but I do have a lot to say about it in a user from a user perspective, I mean, but I have to speak from a hypothetical user perspective on that one because I haven't used it, but I have used XM18s in the past, including a Generation 4 non-flipper. So I, I hope that answers your question. Um, let's see here. My Jake Welsh says, my first spider was the Delica, and it still gets pocket time. I just love that knife. Hey, that's cool, man. The Delica is a good knife. It, it was never for me, but I think it's just the FRN. Honestly, the design is good. If it if that if the Delica came standard in G10 and it had an actual choil like the um like the PM2, oh I'd be all over it. Be all over it. Because I actually like skinny little lockbacks, definitely. Um, let's see here. Norman's EDC, what's going on? Chad Kanatzer, hello everyone. Hello, hello. How do you spidey flick? Um I like to, uh, so, I mean, I, maybe, maybe he's serious, maybe he's not. Um, on a knife like this, I actually shove my my whole finger and the thumb, the fingernail in there, and then I just fire it out. Um, however, on a deployer, some of them I'll actually get my meat, the meat of my finger up underneath the thumb stud, and some of them I'll have to also use my fingernail. It just depends on how much room there is up underneath it and how much leverage I'm able to get on an individual knife. Um, once you work the muscle of the rear finger, there's a lot of muscle memory involved, and you kind of you're kind of able to do it. The best reverse flicker I've ever seen, the guy that can reverse flick anything, even something that doesn't have a hole or a thumb stud, is Ricky. Ricky can reverse flick. Any Ricky can reverse flick a, a spoon that doesn't have a pivot. He'll make it work. Sounds impossible, but I promise you he'll make it work. Um, let's see here. Would you and Ricky ever do hard use reviews in a magic mic format asking for <laughs> Oh gross. Um I'm gonna I I'll tell I'm gonna respectfully decline to answer that question. Um I don't know that that would be beneficial or even something that that people would it, I, I, it, that is a recipe for demonetization definitely um let's see here fixed blades will be in the my the mai show oh yeah um so jeff's got some really cool uh fixed blades that are coming my way mail yeah there we go um let's see here jh first first spider co for me was the original paramilitary wish i still had it uh, it was the knife that broke me and traded a while ago. Um, I have never owned the original paramilitary, nor the military, um, but I've looked at pictures. It's a bizarre looking knife. It broke. Um, did the liner lock break or the tip break? What what happened to it? You must have used it pretty hard. Uh, let's see here. Ricky's <laughs> um, bottom locks are my favorites. <laughs> Dang, I'm saying they're ruined. Yeah, I know, man. We had it all planned. We had our... You know, we had our batons and our hula hoops, and they just, they they blew it, you know? What can you do? We, we've all, Ricky and I have no shortage of, of tricks. Um, let's see here. Um, <laughs> is Big Red leaving? Hey, thanks for stopping in, man. Uh, my first spider coat was a resilience. Um, I think the resilience is a fantastic first spider coat. It's one of the best examples for a first spider coat. 
Slicey Dicey says, I've been trying to get my son to switch away from his Buck 110 and even his Cold Steel Code 4 and the Spider Code Native Chief. Uh, Native Chief haven't persuaded him. Interesting. Your son likes the Buck 110. Ah, that's that. That's interesting. I would assume he would like something more modern just given that he's younger, but I I wouldn't know. Um, my son's not old enough to give him a pocket knife, but I do find that interesting that he prefers um, the Buck 110 and the, uh, the Code 4. Um, let's see here. A whole bunch of people. The first one is the Tenacious. I did a video on that, and that that definitely is my most recommended, my most recent top ten budget knives video that I recommended people. My favorite budget knives. It was I think it was number three on that, or well number eight on that list. Um, and that's I think that's an, an incredible spider coat for people to start out with. Um, Kapara, yeah, Kapara. Uh, first spider coat is the Dragonfly Two. I've never owned a Dragonfly Two, but it's an interesting shape. It looks um, it looks like a, a good like minimalist pocket knife um my first spider co was the spider co or the scale oh yeah that one with the the crazy skeletonized blade that's an interesting knife just for the fact that the blade is all you know like a spider web interesting um your son's 20 oh in oh, okay okay he's 20 and he likes the well then i can't i wouldn't be able to map out his thought process it sounds like that's just what he prefers um uh i like the buck 110 i find it to be kind of thick um, for a knife that I carry to work every single day. Um, but I do, its build quality seems like one, you know, and, and the fact that it's a backlock, it kind of seems like a knife that you really could put to work and really beat on. You know, if I was going to go hiking or camping, I, you know, and I was going to get a folding knife with me, that's, that's not one I'd shy away from for sure. Uh, let's see here. I was wondering if he's not uh, dude. I've got the same recently. Uh, John Duncan says, "Dude, I've got this thing recently where I can only do drop knives, and I've been ordering here and there too, but it's all gonna drop recently. Where can I find some copper shred scales for a pair of two? I that's an interesting question. Um, you mean like the ones that Doctor Frankie put on his um pair of two? I'd like to know that too. Those are super cool. I failed him as a father. I think that I like the Buck One Ten. I don't have a pride. I think that's a good knife." What's the sharpest knife in my collection? Hmm. I, I, I don't know. That's a good question. Um, I mean, as far as like, just like straight out of the box, um, probably, probably the PM2. I, I think, I mean, it's got the best edge geometry and is used the least of all the knives that have exceptional edge geometry that emphasize cutting performance. So I, I think probably the PM2. That's a super boring answer. Um, if not the PM2, it's definitely this guy. I would have to go test these two against each other. This thing is a slicing machine, but I don't know if it's on if it's better than the PM2 or, or not. You know, I, I, I haven't used them back to back enough and on um, the same type of um, media over and over and over again to know that for sure. Uh, let's see. Has anyone handled a best deck? Bowie tie. I really want one. I have not. I didn't know. I don't know what that was. Slice it. I said, let him choose a knife for graduation. Anything he wanted. He picked a buck 110 select an S30V. Hey, it could have been, it could have been worse, man. <laughs> he could have chosen, um, gosh dang it. I always forget about this maker. Who's the maker that makes the Decepticon and the, uh, not the Decepticon. That's custom knife factory. Um, those, those really weird steampunk looking knives, um, that are, uh, Oh, there's a me there's a meme about them. They're like the most crazy tactical looking things, but they're they're not cheap. They're they're used, you know, they use premium materials. They're just a bizarre maker. Um, I cannot think of them off the top of my head. Um, but uh, anyways, if somebody thinks of it, they can say it. They can they uh, yell it out. Just handled, not the blade. Just the handle, not the blade. Was not putting it as the cue. Uh, maybe so. Maybe so. Um, let's see here. What's your thoughts on the Manly Wasp and S90V? I think it's a freaking steal for the price and quality. Um, what's the price on it? S90V makes me think, um, you know, immediately anything in S90V, I think uh, that's going to be fairly expensive. Um, I'll have to take a look at it and then I'd have to know the price on it. Um, let's see here. Nine just be a phase of uh, MC, what are your top three or so favorite handle materials? Number one is by a landslide, by a landslide, let me emphasize this, a landslide, titanium. I love titanium, not because I think it's necessarily more durable or that it's it provides some utilitarian benefit over 
other common handle materials on more expensive knives, it's because I like how it feels and how it looks, especially semi-polished reflective textured titanium. It's just beautiful to me. I am, I'm like a raccoon in the sense that I, I will reach for a shiny object um, in a small crevice just because it might be something that's made out of titanium. Um, next, uh, you know, immediately uh, following that is definitely G10 um, and then um, probably backed uh, away from G10, um, just ever so slightly, is probably micarta and carbon fiber together. Um, I'm very boring in, in the handle materials that I like, but I, I don't know that anything will, um, you know, may, maybe like orange peel zirconium, it, it would be up there too. Um, but uh, I just I just love titanium. It's, it's really difficult. Um, now, if I didn't have to think about uh, the knife being a user, if I just like, um, just like materials that I like to look at, um, it would, you know, titanium would still be up there, but Timascus is definitely, would definitely be my number one for a knife that I wasn't going to use. And then, um, yeah, probably like a, um, probably like an orange peel or a hammer finished zirconium, um, or superconductor, um, would definitely be, um, you know, those, those exotic materials would definitely be up there in my favorites. Uh, let's see here. What's up, Logan? Am I get, am I backing up on the comments? Oh my gosh, I'm way behind again. I'm so sorry. Um, I'm going to skip a couple of things. Let me see. 79 for the watch. 79 bucks for S90V. I did not know that that existed. Yes, I would say that's a steal. I, I'm, I'm going to try and remember that that's a thing and immediately take a look at that right after this live stream. Um, the Jayhawks suck. Logan, you've been in here for one, you've been in here for like 30 seconds and you dare say the Jayhawks suck. We'll see, who's your team? We'll see come basketball season, my friend. Oh, oh, my blood's boiling. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, let's see here. The Jayhawks are awesome, by the way. I, I mean, like, you just look back at, at um, you know, the Jayhawks track record for basketball. Look, look at all the national titles and final fours and all that stuff. And then big 12s. Don't even get me started on big 12s. You guys want to know how to get Metal Complex heated up. Let's talk J-Rock basketball. But anyways, let's let's move on. Knife knife channel, knife stuff. Um, let's see here. Titanium with Mokutai inserts. Mm, yes, I depend on you, Jeff, for acquiring. <laughs> I, have, I have nobody else who can who can acquire things like that that I that I can look at. Jeff is uh, Jeff and um, the, and Harry are are two of the main reasons that this channel has interesting things to look at. Um, um, but uh, J Jeff, uh, yeah, you are you are the acquirer of said um, exotic apparatus. Uh, let's see here. I have not. I've actually not ca uh, messed with the Spider Coast Mach yet. Um, Oaken Seven. Um, the Spider Coast Mach is something that I would be interested in, in taking a look at. Um, let's see here. You have 25 knives and your wife thinks you have a problem. Everybody in here is uh, um, somebody that your wife would think um, has a problem. <laughs> we don't think that you have a problem, Norman ZDC, definitely. Uh, but I can't, you know, I, I, can't, I can't speak for anybody else um, outside of this, um, this live stream. Uh, let's see here. Oh, Logan's laughing. He's trolling me, of course. Uh, my next knife will be a Benchmade. I'm trying to decide budget up to 220 bucks. Prefer knives over 3.4 inches to 4 inches. Uh, my favorites that you're describing there, um, the Super Freak and um, the 20 CV variant of the Benchmade Griptilian. Those are my two. My favorite knife that Benchmade has ever come out with is the Super Freak. That's an, it's basically a Benchmade Griptilian on steroids with um, multi-layered gray and black and G10 with red underneath and red standoffs. Um, and then it's got a super functional M4 blade at about, it's a little bit over that. I wanna say it's like 3.7 inches. Oh yeah, it's right there in your wheelhouse, 3.4 to four inches. And it's right there in your price range at 190, 195 bucks. That's my top recommendation. Today was my XM18 3.5 um, Sheep's Foot and Mass Drop Dale. Hey, the Sheep's Foot is, an, the, Sheep's Foot is the second sliciest blade that um, Rick Hinder has ever come up with. Um, not that he invented the sheep's foot, just his particular variant. Just wait till basketball season, said every Jayhawk fan ever. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're right. There are there are some pretty serious memes about um, Jayhawk basketball fans. We're we're crazy, you know. Um, we are we are. I mean, I know everybody says they're crazy about their team, but seriously, guys, people are nuts about Jayhawk basketball. I think we have the world record for the loudest. Um, you know, a Coliseum in terms of a basketball game. Um, and we also, aside from, aside from our, our 
in my opinion, the, the, the epitome of evil, which would be Kentucky or Duke. Um, I think we have. Um, I think we have the second best overall track record for basketball in history. We also invented basketball. Did you guys know that? Um, the we we own the original rules of basketball and the original. Uh, our first coach invented the game of basketball. Um, anyways, okay, let's get back to knives. Uh, let's see here. I do not carry a daily firearm. I'm not. I don't know a whole lot about firearms, um, but uh, it's it's something that has intrigued me just as something like I I like to look at pictures that I just don't know a whole lot. Um, let's see here. I got to scroll down really fast. Um, slice it. I see second thing, uh, giving a, a good a positive second for the, um, freak. That's good. Um, everybody else also seems to be agreeing. That's good. That's good. Um, Hey, I caught up. Okay. Neves knives. I know you have only been doing the big time lately, but are you still going to show budget knives on this channel? Mr. Big time. <laughs> I'm not Mr. Big Time. You're going to have to blame um, Arrowheads46 for that. He's just He and Shaker and some other generous viewers have been uh, kicking me their super cool stuff. And then I've got a hinderer and I've got a, a Chinese bag. Um, I, I, I'm just a regular guy. Yes, I will absolutely still show um, budget knives. I've got a whole bunch planned that are on my radar. I just have to find a way. The, the, I, the idea is I want to be really careful with the funds that I receive from Patreon. I, I want to use them to... Um, increase the quality of the channel. And if I'm going to purchase a knife, I want to make sure that it's something that you guys care about and something that I can do a giveaway for. Um, so I've got a few on my radar. Um, I'm taking a, I'm, I'm going to try and accumulate that and, and use it wisely and appropriately and, and help grow this channel. But yes, absolutely. Budget knives are on my radar. I love budget knives. Absolutely. Um, wow. Canadian invented basketball. <laughs> <laughs> um hello mc love your vids just a quick shout out um this was our original coach canadian i didn't know that if that's true i honestly didn't know that and you you've schooled me on that information um scott simmons mc what do you think of the spider co caribbean um you think the lc200n lives up to the hype over h1 so lc200n as as far as the research i did i, I in the spider co forums um eric lesser himself said that their tests um kind of um yielded uh, edge retention similar to VG10. However, there are vast reports online of LC200N um, performing close to S30V in edge retention, in which case I would, I mean, that's stunning because it's other, the rest of its chemical makeup suggests that it's fairly well-rounded and obviously very stainless. Um, if it's performing similar to S30V, then it's it's got to be one of the best steals on the planet, and then and I misjudged it. I I don't know. I'm mean, gonna have to get more information on that and kind of understand where the happy medium is between what Spiderco's test results are and what the rest of the knife community's test results are. Um, yeah, Slicey Dicey is definitely one of the best um, knife channels out there. Um, there's here's the thing. From where the from where the knife community was on YouTube five mm -hmm. years ago, it's in an amazing place right now. It honestly is. There's a ton of incredible channels out there. I really enjoy Slicey Dicey. I really enjoy, enjoy Neves Knives. I honestly watch their videos um, every day. You know that I well that I get a chance to sit down in front of the TV. You guys are all on my subscriber list, and I go through as many as many as I can before my wife needs something, which is usually only only about 17 minutes into something. Um, let's see here. Uh, me and Arrowhead need to talk about another sale. Um, I think I have a part. Um, you know, I just realized I, is my phone about to die? Seriously, I need to grab my cell phone charger so that that doesn't happen. Hey, you guys hang on one sec. I'm going to grab my phone charger so that this, uh, this show doesn't get, get stopped. I'll be right back. Of course, I have to leave, run off, and yell, just like I do in some of my videos. All right. Don't worry. I'm coming back. I've got my cell phone charger, and everything's going to work out just fine. All right. Here we go. Let's plug her in there. Is it even going to reach? Oh, my gosh. It's probably going to... Be a big damper on that. Yeah, I'm gonna need. <laughs> I'm gonna need the the extension cord. Oh, I might if I can't find it, I'm gonna have to cut this live stream short. Oh, jeez. 
Well, we're closing in on the 45 minute mark anyway, so we'll, we're gonna have to cut it five minutes short. Um, that's not that big of a deal. Let me see if I can answer a few more questions here before I have to cut this off. I don't wanna get the cord right in there. Um, MC, what's your favorite non-stainless steel uh, that I've used? M4, definitely. Just given the fact that it's got, I mean, it's from watching those um, those competition chopping things. The edge stability must be off the charts, you know, toughness and edge stability and edge retention. I'm out of breath from running up and down the stairs, geez. But yeah, um, CPM N4 is probably my favorite non-stainless. Let's see here. Uh, MC Slicy Knees, I watch all of them. Shoot awesome man, seriously. Oh good. I'm glad everybody's sharing the love. That's awesome. Um Slicey and MC Live. I would I I will collaborate with Slicey if he wants me to collaborate with him. Um that would definitely be cool. Absolutely. That would be good for that would be good for um that would be really good for me. I don't know how much he's gonna benefit from it. Uh let's see. Um uh, oh that well, wasn't that far behind. Um Banter247, do people ever think you're Ben from Blade HQ? <laughs> <laughs> uh good for the world yes like it would be you know we just we need to grace the world with our pr I, it's that is that's even if i'm joking about that that sounds horribly egotistical to say no i have to i have to keep myself from joking about things like that um ben from blade hq just quit what he did like he quit blade hq yeah, we do, Slicey. We have various things. You, he, he quit Blade HQ. I did not know that. Oh my gosh! I have to check out the Wasp and Ben at uh, Blade HQ. He's moving. He's moving to another industry. Interesting. Um, oh, on good terms. That's good. That's good. I'm glad somebody said that. Um, Ricky says, "Okay, Slicey, you're in on next Sunday's Magic." <laughs> Me and Ricky and Slicey are are um, we're, we're going to uh, we're going to spice it up with uh, with some serious Sunday magic for you guys. No, no, that's not official. Um, <laughs> uh, what is a collab live video with Metal Complex and I would be an hour of hinders. That it probably would. If we, you know, I mean, we could just do that. We could just do an hour long conversation about everything that we love about hinder and knives that what that'll be is both of us trying to yell over each other about about rick hinder and knives and and th there'll be a problem there because anytime i t ricky can tell you anytime i have a conversation with anybody else about hinder and knives it's really just one person just slowly stop they just stop talking because i can't shut up and i feel like slicey and i would just do that to each other where we're, we're both just yelling for an, an hour and nobody would really understand what we're saying <laughs> uh Oh, we can meet at Arrowhead's forty-six house for the uh, for the dual video. Perfect. Are you gonna if you pick us up in your vet for sure? But I call shotgun. Uh, let's see here. So knees nice is slowly backing away. <laughs> oh my gosh, man! What do I have left for battery on this? I'm at three percent. God dang! I have such a podunk setup. I'm on a card table with an LED floodlight pointed at a corner. I've got a faux leather rectangle taped to the top of it that came from China. And um, I, I have an $8 tripod and I'm, I'm desperately searching for an extension cord so that I can keep my live stream going for another 15 minutes. Uh, geez, I, I, I just Kansas, Kansas people problems. We can see the legs. I, can you see, right, can you see the, the actual legs in the video? Oh man. Rick owns one of mine, Slicey. Okay. Um, gosh darn it. On the, you know, my the videos always look good. I feel like on, when I watch them on my TV, I can't see any of the boundaries or anything like that. But maybe I'm messing it up. I have to um, just just cut this off um, for you know the, the fact that my phone just died. So that's going to be pretty much it for this live stream. Um, of course, in the future, I will do these basically every chance that I get. But I'm really happy that there were 40 people at times in this uh, in this uh, live stream um, chatting it up. That was fun. Um, I hope everybody had a good time. I'm going to go check all the stuff out that you guys mentioned, um, definitely. 
and um, you know we'll definitely have uh, we'll definitely have more to talk about the next time I do a live stream. Um, but hey, and thanks for all the other uh, knife channels for stopping in and saying hi. Um, make sure if you're not subscribed to any of these guys, go get subscribed to them because we all we all kind of talk about the same stuff. We all kind of communicate watch each other's videos and try to attend each other's live streams and it's generally a good time and there's just this is a good time for the knife community lots of positivity lots of interaction people from learning from each other i really like that really really cool so anyways guys if you enjoyed this live stream don't forget don't forget to leave a like before you go if you'd like to check out my other content i do of course have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that i do or don't like so check that stuff out and if you enjoy all my content and you're not subscribed already please subscribe because there's definitely more coming Thanks again for watching tonight, guys, and have a great night.